A lot of students I know, and I'm willing to bet that you're one of them too, have struggles reading notes on ledger lines. The notes high up or below the staff, and you need those ledger lines really to tell where you are, but they're still really, really confusing. Well, today I'm gonna give you three tips or strategies on how to read ledger lines a whole lot easier. Your PM teacher, Tim here, <laughs> let's get to it. Okay, before we begin, I just want to quickly plug the lessons or the courses over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. So if you're a big fan of my YouTube channel or you've been following me on social media, you love what's coming out, you're really, really going to love the courses over on my website. Well, why? Well, unlike YouTube and you know all the other content I put out where I just kind of like cover one topic and then move on to the next one, not really all in order or in a, um, you know, a really organized fashion. Well, these courses will uh, help you learn a lot more about piano and music in general because not only do you get access to instructional videos, but you also get access to assignments, practice examples, um, activities, and real sheet music to play to make sure that you're not just learning each topic, but you're learning practicing and mastering each topic as well, which is so, so essential when learning music. So head over to pianolessonsontheweb.com, check it out. Great way to support both your own music education and the channel as well. Just real quick, make sure you use code YouTube uh, during checkout for an additional 15% off. All right, on the ledger lines. I'm gonna jump into this lesson assuming you know how to read notes on the staff. If you do not know how to read notes on the staff, uh, I am going to put a link in the description of a lesson you should watch before this one, which is about you know the basics of reading notes. So that's step one is to learn how to read music, but I will include um, something for you to where you can do that. Okay, so as we know, ledger lines are when you start to have notes that go way up or way below the staff. Now, strategy one, which is my least favorite of the three, so stay tuned um, for the other two, is just basically counting from the top note, the top line, and figuring out what the note is from there. So say I have this note right here. So if I know that this note on the bottom is F, well, this note's G, next one's A, B, C, so that must be D. The problem with this is the strategy is it takes way, way too long. So if you're doing it this way, you probably want to um, you know, check out some of the other things that I have. You know, same thing goes down um, below. You can read from E and then just kind of count down from there. So you got E, D, C, uh, B, A, G. And also counting backwards also takes even more time because you got to go backwards in the alphabet. Pretty tricky. Okay, so we're going to kind of skip over that because that's not what I recommend you do. What I do recommend you do, however, is when you start to have notes on ledger lines. So say uh, we have a note right on the line, so that note is on a line. And then what you want to do is you do want to go from the top line, just like before, but this time you are going to be using the skipping method. So let me just kind of show you on the piano what that's going to be like. So the skipping method, all that really is, is um, say we have the top note here, F, is every line, you, hopefully you figured this out by now, but if you haven't, every line that goes up on the piano, or if you're going by space to space to space, but for now it's just line to line, is that you are skipping every other note. So if you get good at skipping notes on the piano and knowing what the note letter is, so F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F, you can actually apply that to figuring out your ledger lines. So back to the sheet music, I'll actually get both here. So you have the top note F and then the next line. So you're just skipping up to A. So you can figure that out real quick. So maybe you'll get lucky and you'll have a ledger line right here, but maybe you'll have it like, I don't know, way up here. So what are we going to do? Well, oops, let me kind of show you what we're doing here. Uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to use the skipping method. So as you remember on the piano, it's F, A, C, E, G. Boom, that note is G. And it's quite a while up there. It's all the way up there. But see how much faster that was rather than counting every little thing in between? 
That's why this is one of my favorite methods, although I do have another one for you. Um, let's do from a space really quick, and let's just do it from the base clef just to kind of show you that it works on both. So um, this time I'm going to put a ledger line. Well, it's going to be on a, uh, between a ledger line, so it's going to be kind of a space there. And this time we're going to figure out what note that is. Well, what I recommend you do is find the top space. So when you're doing the skipping stuff, if you have a space ledger line note, you want to start counting from a space note on the staff. So um, you probably know that that note's G right there. So all you got to do is skip, and if you're not good on the, you know, doing this by memory, you can actually go to the piano and go, okay, G, next one's B, D, so that one's F. Or if you're just really good like me, you can go G, B, D, F, boom. That one is F. See how much faster that is? You can get them uh, within a couple of seconds. Let's do one that's kind of crazy. Let's uh, see how good I am at skipping, huh? So you're almost never going to see a note like this, but just to show you that this works super well is we're going to be starting from A here, and I actually know how to skip. You can use the piano if you want, but it's um, A, C, E, G, B, D. That note must be F. Pretty simple. Same thing going below the staff. Let's do the treble clef again. So say I have a ledger line um, like right here. That's probably the lowest ledger line you'll find on the treble clef because then you start getting into bass clef from there. So now you're going to use your skipping method. However, you're going to be using it in the reverse direction. This kind of gets a lot of students um, for sure, but you can still use your piano to kind of figure out where you're at. So you have E, so you want to go from the bottom line, because we're going from a ledger line, line, if that makes any sense, and you want to be skipping down now, like that. And since I'm pretty good at it, I don't even need to really count on the keyboard, but it's E, C, A, that note right there must be F. So the skipping method, super easy, but super powerful. And then the same thing, um, if I had like uh, the three ledger lines there, but it's on the space, you're going to start counting from the bottom space instead. So you got F, let's see, F, D, B, G, E. F, D, B, G, E, right there. So that note must be E. Have you found yourself yet? There's another method. Personally, method two that I just taught you is my favorite one but I really want to introduce you to this one because it actually will probably get you to think about it maybe in a different way you haven't uh, thought about it before. And actually some students I know actually get this method a lot easier than even the skipping method. So I really want to show you. So here we go. So the one thing I want to point out is when you start going up from ledger lines off the staff, there's going to be a pattern that you're probably already familiar with. So here we go. I'm going to name these four notes, and I am going to, I want you to think about maybe where you've seen this before. So you got F, A, C, E. So we're just kind of using our skip it, skipping method there. Gee, F, A, C, E, that should look familiar, right? Should it sound familiar as well? It spells a certain word. It spells face. Now, where in music have we probably heard that before? Well, those are the same as the spaces for the treble clef. So a lot of, you know, I teach my students um, this way personally is uh, that, you know, the spaces from the bottom to the top of the staff on treble clef spell face. So what you can do is if you know this knowledge, you're like, okay, going up lines, it's the same as on the staff with the spaces. So you could just say, okay, it spells face and use it just the way you learned them on the staff, just keeping in mind that they're swapped, right? So if you're talking about lines going up off the staff, you're going to be talking about the spaces from the staff. Same thing, uh, the opposite, let me show you. Same thing starting from the top space going up off the staff on the ledger lines. That is not quite what I wanted to do, but there we go. Same thing. So these are all spaces now. So what do you think we're going to grab the notes from? Well, you're going to grab them from the lines, E, G, B, D, F, or every good boy deserves fries, or whatever variation you may have learned. So it is the exact same. Just keep in mind that they are different. Now, what if the notes go down below the staff? Well, it works the same way. you got to be careful, though. 
So we got um, line, 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 right? So we're probably going to be talking about the spaces on the staff just like we did before. It's the opposite. So F A C E. You got to be really careful though because when you go down on the staff, you're actually going to be reading them backwards. So instead of going from the bottom to the top, you're going to be reading from E C A F and then E C A F just like that. So just careful when you're going down, you got to go in the reverse direction. The same method applies for the base clef, so I'm not going to go over it too much, but I just want to show you that's the same thing. So say we have um, some notes going from the bottom line down off the staff. Okay, so we're talking about lines, right? So where are we going to be getting these notes from? Well, you're going to be getting them from the spaces. However, you got to be careful because before the saying's all cows eat grass, which is correct, but you got to read it from the top to the bottom to make sure that they correlate appropriately. Remember those things when you were a kid when you had to uh, draw the lines? Anyway, um, so those notes correspond just like that. You've got um, G, E, A, or no, C, A, or all cows eat grass. So much easier to do it from the bottom up, but you'll just have to get used to that. The important thing is to recognize the trouble and then take steps to correct it. You know, I have a ton more lessons on the channel about reading music, and I have actually a lot of really, really useful um, tips on how to read music much faster, both on the staff and off the staff. If you really want to check it out, that playlist you can find right here. So it's been your piano teacher, Tim, here as always. Thank you so much for coming by today, and I'll see you, yes you, in the next lesson.